Today, I'm gonna to be giving you a closer look at this do-it-yourself large wall clock from Homey. So this one is pretty cool. It actually turned out very nice. Um, you can kind of decide on the size that you want this to be because as you can see, these are all individual pieces that you mount on your wall. Um, so you can choose the size that you want. This is not as large as you can make it, but it's a good size. You can see it in relation to my closet there. It's really filling up that space on the wall. So what I like about this one is if you were to buy a huge clock this size, it would be, number one, very expensive. Um, but what I like about this is that you can really pick a space in your home where you want to have a clock and um, just make it a signature piece specific to that space. So we chose the size in this specific to the wall size. We wanted to fill that space and so it worked very nicely. So I'll just give you a closer look at how you put this together and how you do this. So um, first of all, I will say that the instructions are um, gibberish pretty much. So there are nice colorful pictures that look specific, but um, most of the points on here, like the numbered points, I just would have done this completely differently. It just doesn't make too much sense. Um, so let's see, the panel is adhered to the corresponding scale bottom surface. Like, I, what does that mean? Um, the calibration plate and the scalar ruler are set on the movement axis and the four angled is fixed with a transparent glue. Okay. I don't know how that's step three, what that's supposed to mean and what you're supposed to do with that. So it's pretty much, I mean, these steps, you have to just look at it, lay it out and figure out. Also, um, as far as the instructions go, they don't actually show you a picture of what the clock is supposed to look like. So the product page is a little bit more helpful in that regard. Now, what we've done here is we've made these numbers, the 12 and the six vertical, and these ones horizontal. Um, now we could have taken that and flipped it to be horizontal. We had enough space there, but we wanted the time when it hit exactly on 12 to not just be in the middle of the word 12, to be able to see really specifically where it was and so we had it lined up to the exact point this way a little bit better. Now as you can see here these numbers are varying sizes, kind of different fonts, um, uh, different things here like the 12 and the 3 have an underline, the 6 and the 9 kind of a line going through it so it's just kind of very artsy and different looking. So anyway I'll show you what we did to mount this here. So this piece right here you just mount onto the wall it takes one double A battery to power it that's it um, and mount that onto the wall. Now on that surface, you have this paper that you just put there on the middle. We taped it on there to make sure that it didn't swivel around because these are going to be your access points and let you know where your number needs to be in relation to the clock. Um, now, I would recommend with this one, we had two people doing this. So we mounted this, put the paper on there, and my husband took the paper and was just shifting it around, and I went around and drew lines to make sure that we were getting it accurate. Also, when we mounted our numbers, um, he had a level on the wall, so he would place it, you know, the number where we kind of wanted it, make sure it was level there, and then give it to me, and I'd peel off the uh, paper on the back, and then he'd put the adhesive on. So in order to get kind of the exact look that you want, it's probably better to have two working hands because it is a little bit difficult to stretch and reach if you are doing a larger clock. Okay, so I'll just show you quickly here. Um, you take this paper from, the, there's a page there with the different lines, you put it here and then line it up in order to go out as far as you want to. Now this particular clock that we did, we did 45 centimeters. So you can choose the size of your clock and that's what we did. We just cut the paper there and then drew a line right at 45. You can make this as large as 60 centimeters. So had we done that, it would be this long, uh, this extra length on all the numbers. We didn't have the space here on this wall to do that. Okay, so we went around, we had that access point right here, lined up the paper and drew the line. So it just makes sure that it goes along this line, extends that line out. And then we drew little marks on the wall. 
and then came and got all of our individual numbers. And so somewhere in the midpoint, um, the line that we drew would be like right here. And we put the number directly over that and kind of center it over there. And that's where we paste it. So you can see that it is 10.05. Um, and actually our numbers look quite straight. And in keeping time, we've compared it with another clock and it looks right on following that guide the way that we did. So there are foam pieces, that's what these numbers are. Now they don't look like foam because you can see a shiny top coat and I'll show you what that is. So um, basically you punch out these foam pieces from here. So you can see that um, they are thick. They really stand off the wall and so they give depth and texture. It's pretty cool, really. Um, so the foam pieces, it just has this very flat, unfinished look to it. And then you also have these very thin pieces that are kind of plasticky and hard and it's got a nice sheen on it. So what you do with that is peel off the backing piece, stick it directly onto the foam, line it up there. They're all the same size. I mean, they're made to go directly over them. And then there's a top coat on here so that you can be pressing and doing things on here without leaving fingerprints. And then you just peel that off. So that's how you get um, this thick foam look, and you can kind of see a line there of that little piece that goes over top. So there is a lot of assembly. I mean, you have to line this up, set it up right, place the numbers on. It's sticky adhesive on the back of these numbers that seems to be very sticky. They're really stable. They're not going anywhere. My one concern is I'm not sure. I think that someday when you peel these off, you may need to repaint. So I'm not sure how how stuck they are. If you wanted to purposefully take them off, how challenging that would be. Now this middle piece right here, that just pops off the wall. So you can change the battery, put it back on. Um, and then you have the hour hand that goes on the bottom and the minute hand that goes over top. And you can kind of tell, you can kind of see it like vibrating as it's slowly moving so that you know that it's keeping time. But um, it's this really, really nice effect. I love the look of it. I think that it turned out really, really nice. Um, and I'm definitely pleased with it. Wasn't super impressed with the instructions, um, but just knowing the process that we went through, I wish that I'd taken pictures and kind of given a step-by-step -step guide to this one. Um, but basically, you just want to, in the very beginning, get those numbers lined out, decide how large you want this clock to be, um, have them lined up and you know accessible for you, and then mount that on the wall, get your little paper, and then go through and draw your lines for each number at uh, the place that you want it to be, depending on the length and size of your clock. Now the guides that they have there are very easy. As long as you've got them lined up, you're gonna get the clock right. So that was done really well um, for you to get this nice effect that you want. And then um, just decide the positioning and everything of your numbers. And basically then at that point, it's just mounting. I would recommend using a level um, to kind of help you keep the numbers from being crooked and things like that. We would mainly balance, uh, in particular, the number 10 and the number 11, put a level right there and we'd set the numbers on top, make sure that the level was straight on and then the numbers would be resting on top. And that's how we got that nice line there. So they're straight, um, which is definitely a little bit harder with the numbers that are two individual numbers here. So that's been your closer look. I'm so pleased with um, this effect. It uh, turned out quite nice. It seems to be keeping an accurate time as well. Um, and it looks good. As you can see, like on the number seven, there is a sheen to it. If you wanted a flat, like just the flat foam look, um, then you can keep it like that. I kind of like this glossy look that's on here. So I definitely like the top coat that goes over top of it. I do wish that that was already on the foam. It's just more assembly. You paste the number on and then you have to go through and peel off and paste the top over top of it. So when you feel like you're done, you really kind of start over just layering on top. But I do love the effect of that. And um, yeah, just pleased with how this turned out. Uh, don't expect this one to be one that you move easily, obviously, because it's not like taking a wall off or a clock off the wall and moving it around. You want to make sure that you've got a place where you really want this because you're going to have it up there for quite a while. And so it's a good thing that these numbers don't just fall off. They're stuck on there pretty good. So that's been your closer look at this DIY wall clock. 
I love the effect of it. I love that you can make this um, small and that you can make it very, very large, like the one that we've got on here. You can go anywhere from 10 centimeters, which as you can see, I'll just line that up there. 10 centimeters would be, I don't even know how you would do that. The numbers would just be right here surrounding that. Um, anywhere from there to 60 centimeters. So you can get a really large size. And that has been your Closer Look.